Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're taking a deep dive into a topic that might surprise you. Berber literature. Berber literature. Oh, yeah. We've got a ton of fascinating sources here, and we're going to uncover centuries of writing. Okay. We're talking about everything from, like, ancient religious texts yeah. to, get this, a Berber translation of Romeo and Juliet. It's wild, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a side of Berber literature that most people just don't realize exists. Romeo and Juliet in Berber? That's got to be a story in itself. It really is. But before we jump ahead, let's rewind a bit. Okay. Where does this literary journey even begin? What are we talking about, like the very first written stuff? Well, you might be surprised to hear that it wasn't about poems or stories. Oh. It was more about spreading religious ideas. Hmm, interesting. Specifically, the Ibadi doctrine, which is a branch of Islam. Okay. It became really popular in North Africa. Uh -huh. And they were big on using Berber for their teachings. So they weren't just focused on converting people. They wanted to make sure people really understood the teachings. It, That's pretty progressive for the time. It was. We're talking way back in the second century. Yeah. A.H. Wow. A book called al Tawhid, meaning the oneness of God, was written in Berber. Okay. And that was huge because it showed that Berber could handle these complex religious concepts. That's so interesting because it kind of challenges that whole idea that some languages aren't sophisticated enough for, you know, big ideas. Yeah, it does. Were there any Berber scholars who were like champions for using the language for serious scholarship back then? Absolutely. A great example is Abu Sal al Nafusi. Okay. He was a big deal in the third century AH. Got it. And he was fluent in both Arabic and Berber. Mm. Wrote a ton in both languages too, like sermons, history, even legal stuff. Wow. So this wasn't just about like practicality. Mm. It was also about elevating the status of Berber as a language. It was. His work really helped legitimize it. So we're talking a lot about religious stuff. Were there any other types of texts being translated into Berber at the time? Well, religious texts were definitely the main focus, especially for the Ibadi movement. Ibadi, right. For example, they translated the compendium of Abu Anam al Zurasani ah. into Berber, Okay. which was a key Ibadi jurisprudence book. Got it. The idea was to make it easier for Nafusa students who weren't as good with Arabic to learn. Like creating a whole Berber education system. Exactly. But I'm guessing not everything survived from back then. Sadly, no. Right. Wars, fires. I mean, history can be tough on these things. Yeah. A lot was lost. Like, imagine what was lost when places like the Bonnie Durjan Fortress were destroyed. It's a tragedy, really. But have there been any cool rediscoveries? There have. Researchers like Saleh al-Din al-Taladi have been on a mission to find and preserve these old manuscripts. So there's still hope. Always. And there have been breakthroughs. Tell me more. Well, for instance, the history of Nafusa. Okay. It was mentioned by the scholar Al-Biruni, but was considered lost for ages. Really? But guess what? It's been rediscovered. That's awesome. It's like finding a treasure. It is. And then there's Ibn Aynam's Compendium. The one we were just talking about. Yeah, that one. It was super rare. And scholars thought it was gone for good. Oh. But then copies turned up in different libraries. Amazing. It's like piecing together a giant puzzle. You know, we've talked a lot about religious texts. Right. But you mentioned Romeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah. How on earth does that get translated into Berber? Well, that's where things get really interesting. I bet. I mean, the fact that Romeo and Juliet exists in Berber shows just how adaptable the language is. Yeah. It's not limited to just one type of thing. Not just religious stuff. Right. It can be about timeless love stories mm -hmm. just as much as complex religious ideas. So it's a language that can connect with global themes. For sure. It's more than just local storytelling. Exactly. So what other unexpected global works have been translated? Get ready for this, because it's a wild ride. Okay, I'm ready. We've got classic wisdom tales like Kalila Watimna, philosophical works from the European Enlightenment. Thinkers like Voltaire and Rousseau. Voltaire and Rousseau in Berber. That's incredible. I know, right? It kind of blows up any stereotypes about what Berber can express. It really does. So what else? Oh, and there's more. We've also got Albert Camus and Dostoevsky in Berber. Wow. Two of the biggest names in the literature. I'm speechless. <laughs> That's amazing. It shows how much Berber can handle. Right. From ancient religious teachings to Dostoevsky, that's quite a range. It is. It really highlights the power and flexibility of the language. It's not stuck in the past. It's evolving. And it's not limited to just literature and philosophy either. Right. There's science, too. There is. Things like math, natural sciences, physics, they've all been translated. So Berber is keeping pace with modern knowledge. Absolutely. That's amazing. And speaking of modern... 
let's not forget about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Oh, right. That was translated into Berber in the late 1980s. A pivotal moment. Yeah, it was a powerful statement. It really solidified Berber's place in the modern world. To have those universal values expressed in your own language, that must have been incredibly meaningful. It was. It showed that Berber wasn't just about the past, it was about the present and the future, about advocating for basic human rights. And we can't talk about translations without mentioning religious texts. You're probably thinking about the Quran, right? Busted. I know there are a few Berber translations out there. There are. Which ones are the most well-known? Well, there's an authorized version by the King Fahd Complex. Oh, okay. And then there's eight Zarad's translation, which is known for being really accurate. So having these translations available must have a huge impact. It does. It's not just about convenience. It's about connecting with your faith on a deeper level. Exactly. Have any other Islamic texts been translated? Oh, yeah, a bunch. Like what? We've got sacred hadiths, the 40 hadiths, and the prophetic biography. All in Berber. All in Berber. It's all about making sure that religion and culture can exist together. It's beautiful how language can bridge those different beliefs. It is. Now, were there any attempts to translate, say, the Bible into Berber? You know, there were a few, although they weren't that successful. Really? Yeah. One of the earliest was back in 1845 by James Richardson, a British traveler. That's surprisingly early. I know, right? He translated it into the Adames dialect. Hmm. He was hoping to spread Christianity, but it didn't really work out. Did anyone else try? Yeah, in 1903, a guest Muli translated it into the Kabyle dialect. Interesting. It didn't lead to mass conversions, but it shows how people were trying to introduce different religious ideas through language. It speaks to the like intersections of history and culture, right? Berber wasn't isolated. No, it wasn't. It came into contact with all these different beliefs. That's right. Now, what about Berber dictionaries and lexicons? Dictionaries? Oh, they're fascinating. They're like a window into the soul of a language. They really are. One of the oldest ones is the Book of Names by Ibn Tunart. Okay. From the 12th century CE. Can you believe it? That's incredible. People were already trying to document and preserve Berber way back then. So cool. Were there other types of dictionaries? Oh, yeah. Tons. Like what? We've got bilingual poetic dictionaries. Bilingual. Interesting. They were used to teach Arabic to Berber speakers. Wow. And what about dictionaries for religious terms? We've got one from 1794 by Sheikh Yahi bin Zakaria al Yafrani. So clearly, lexicography in Berber has a long history. A long and rich history. And have modern dictionaries kept pace with the times? Absolutely. There's a French Kabbal dictionary from 1886. Okay. And then there's Charles de Foucault's Comprehensive Imohan Dictionary. How long did that take to put together? Over 30 years. Wow. Talk about dedication. Right. And it's considered one of the most comprehensive ones ever made. And are there any contemporary dictionaries that stand out? Definitely. Like what? Professor Mohammed Shafiq's Arabic Berber Dictionary. How long did that one take? 27 years. Yeah. It's monumental. So it seems like passion and meticulous attention to detail are like prerequisites for this field? They definitely are. Now, are all these dictionaries just for Berber speakers or have they been shared more broadly? Well, a lot of them have been translated into other languages. Into what languages? English, French, Italian, Japanese, even Catalan. Wow. So there's a global interest in Berber. There really is. It's not just a local thing anymore. Nope. And it's not just traditional dictionaries either. What else is there? Technology is getting involved. We've got Google Translate for Berber, bilingual electronic dictionaries, voice readers, Berber character recognition and Defnan, you name it. It's amazing how technology is being used to preserve and promote languages. It really is. Now, I have to ask about the oldest known Berber book in Libya. Oh, you mean Asra di Ibradin G. Idran and Infusin? Is that it? Yes. It's by Sheikhs Ibrahim Usliman al Shamaxi. Okay. And it's all about geography. Hmm. It was actually published in Algeria back in 1885. So, not that old, relatively speaking. Right, but still significant. What makes it so special? Well, it gives us a unique perspective on the Infusion region of Libya. I see. The Tawalt Cultural Foundation republished it in 2003, and the Libyan Jihad Study Center later translated it. So it's getting more attention. It is. Yeah. Which is great, because it adds to our understanding of Berber culture. It shows that even recent works can be really valuable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the incredibly rich tapestry of Berber literature. And I think it's safe to say that we've only just begun to explore it. We've just scratched the surface. It's mind-blowing when you think about just how much depth there is to Berber literature. 
We've yeah. talked about those amazing rediscoveries and the sheer variety of stuff that's been translated into Berber. I know, right? It really changes your whole perspective on what Berber is capable of, from religious texts to Romeo and Julia talk about range. And that's exactly why translation is so crucial to understanding Berber literature. It's not just about bringing outside ideas in. It's also about sharing Berber culture with the world, right? And it's, exactly. It's a two-way street, enriching Berber while also showing everyone its unique beauty. I like that. A two-way street. It's like it's helping Berber evolve while also preserving its heritage. You got it. And when you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, translation becomes this powerful tool for keeping Berber culture alive. Yeah. It prevents it from becoming isolated. It keeps it relevant in a constantly changing world. That's it. So it really makes you wonder... What does the future hold for Berber literature? What new translations might we see? What kind of impact could they have on Berber culture and identity? Those are big questions. They are. Out of everything we've talked about, what do you think has been the most significant impact of translation on Berber literature? Hmm, that's a good one. For me, it's how translation has opened up all these possibilities for Berber speakers. It's given them access to knowledge and ideas from around the world, from ancient wisdom to modern philosophy. It's broadened their horizons in a big way. Totally. But I'd imagine translating into Berber comes with its own unique challenges. Oh, absolutely. It's a complex language with so many dialects. How do you even begin to navigate that? That's one of the biggest hurdles for translators, for sure. They have to be so careful with those nuances, making sure the text is accurate, but also understandable to everyone. It sounds like a delicate balancing act. It is. Staying true to the original work while also making it resonate with Berber speakers who might come from different backgrounds. Right, because not all Berber speakers have the same cultural background or linguistic preferences. Exactly. Translating into Berber requires this deep understanding of not just the language itself. But also the culture and context. You got it. So it's not just about linguistic skills. Well, It's about cultural sensitivity, too. It is. It's like they're cultural mediators. That's a great way to put it. And it's something that often gets overlooked. Yeah. People think translation is just a technical skill. Right. But it's more than that. It is. It's an art form. Speaking of art, I'm curious about poetry and music. They're so central to Berber culture. What role has translation played in sharing those with the world? Oh, it's been huge. Translation has allowed people outside the Berber community to really experience the beauty of Berber poetry and music, which are so deeply rooted in their history and values. I can imagine how tough it must be to translate poetry, though. It's so much more than just words. It is. It's about capturing those layers of meaning, the rhythm, the rhyme, all those subtle cultural nuances that are hard to convey in another language. So it's not just about being a good linguist. Yeah. You also need that poetic sensibility. Exactly. That Someone who can appreciate those subtleties and find creative ways to bring them across. That's such a great way to describe it. It's like weaving a whole new tapestry. I love that. It really captures the essence of what good translation is. Creating something new while honoring the spirit of the original work. It's a collaborative process, almost like the translator is working with the original artist across time and space. That's such a cool way to think about it. It really is a testament to human creativity, our ability to connect despite those language barriers. It is. But it also makes me think about the impact on the translators themselves. Oh, that's interesting. How does working on these translations shape their own understanding of Berber culture? I think for many, it's a truly transformative experience. They're engaging with this rich cultural heritage, and it can be a journey of self-discovery. I bet. It must be humbling, too, knowing that you're representing another culture's voice. Absolutely. They feel a responsibility to do it justice. It pushes them to confront their own biases and step outside their comfort zones. So it's not just about language. Yeah. It's about building empathy and understanding between cultures. Precisely. It encourages us to see the world through different eyes. It reminds us of how beautiful human diversity really is. That's it. Language is a gateway to different worlds of meaning. <laughs> now thinking about the future, what do you think lies ahead for Berber literature? How will translation continue to shape it? Mm, that's a tough one. What kinds of works do you see being translated in the coming years, and what impact might that have? Well, I definitely think we'll see more translations of those classic works we talked about, the literature, philosophy, science, the art. But I also hope we'll see more contemporary works being translated. Stuff that reflects what's happening in the Berber community today. Exactly. That would be amazing. It would give Berber writers a platform to connect with a wider audience, to have their voices heard on a global stage. 
it would be a chance for them to contribute to the big conversations happening in the world right now. Yes. Climate change, social justice, technology, all of it. It would be amazing to see Berber perspectives on those issues. It would. And I think technology will play a huge role in making that happen. You know, we talked about Google Translate, but what else do you think is on the horizon? Well, machine translation is getting more sophisticated all the time. That's true. Imagine being able to translate huge amounts of text really quickly. That would be a game changer. It would. It could really bridge the gap between Berber speakers and all that information that's currently locked away in other languages. I love that. But machine translation still has its limits, right? Oh, for sure. Hmm. Especially for creative texts, like literature and poetry. Those nuances are hard to capture. They are. That's where human translators will always be needed. They bring that human touch that machines just can't replicate. Exactly. So it'll be a collaborative effort, humans and machines working together to make translation more efficient. I like that idea. What about artificial intelligence? Do you think AI could eventually take over completely? That's a question everyone's asking. Right. It's kind of scary to think about. AI is getting really good, but I think human translators will always be essential for work that needs creativity and cultural sensitivity. There are certain things that machines just can't grasp. Right. Those subtle things that make a translated text truly resonate with readers. That's reassuring to hear because those human elements are so important. They are. Yeah. But it will be interesting to see how AI develops and how it impacts translation as a whole. Not just for Berber, but for all languages. Exactly. But for now, both human and machine translation have their roles to play in making Berber literature accessible. And ensuring that the language keeps thriving. Right. Speaking of which, there's a big challenge facing Berber literature that we haven't really touched on yet. What's that? The lack of funding and support for translation initiatives. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. It is. Translation takes time and skill. And translators deserve to be paid fairly for their work. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of talented Berber translators are struggling because there just isn't enough support. It's like we're undervaluing this incredibly important work. We are. Preserving culture, sharing knowledge, promoting understanding, it's all vital and we need to invest in it. Absolutely. If we want Berber literature to flourish, we need to support the people who make it accessible. I couldn't agree more. It's an investment that will benefit everyone. It will. It's about recognizing that every language and culture has something special to offer. And translation is the key to unlocking that potential. It is. Now, shifting gears a bit, let's talk about a specific area of Berber literature that I'm really passionate about. What's that? Children's literature. Oh, that's so important. It is. Children's books have such a huge impact on young minds. They shape how kids see the world. They do. And translating children's books into Berber is essential for instilling a sense of pride and identity in young Berber speakers. It shows them that their language and culture matter. Exactly. Mm. And it helps ensure that Berber continues to be a living language. It's about planting those seeds for the future. And it's not just about preserving tradition. Not it's also about introducing kids to the incredible diversity of world literature. Absolutely. Translating books from all over the globe can broaden their horizons. Help them develop empathy and understanding. Exactly. It's about giving them the tools to navigate a globalized world. While still staying connected to their roots. That's the key. That balance between tradition and innovation. I love that. Are there any types of children's literature that you think are particularly suited for translation? Oh, there's so many great options, but I'd have to say folk tales and fairy tales. Ooh, good choice. They're full of wisdom and imagination. And those universal themes that resonate with everyone. Exactly. They're perfect <laughs> for translation because they can connect with kids from all backgrounds. I can just picture a kid completely lost in one of those stories. It warms my heart just thinking about it. It's like those stories come alive for them. They do. And it, it's a way of keeping those Berber storytelling traditions alive. It's also a chance for grandparents to share those stories with their grandkids. That's beautiful. Keeping those lines of communication open between generations. That's what it's all about. And it shows how important it is to make those oral traditions accessible to younger generations. Translation can play a big part in that. It can. Now let's talk about another important area where translation can make a difference. What's that? Preserving and revitalizing those endangered Berber dialects. Oh, that's something I care deeply about. Me too. Mm. Every language is precious. When a language dies, it's like losing a piece of our shared history. All those stories and traditions just vanish. It's tragic. Mm. So how can translation help? Well, 
One way is to translate existing works into those endangered dialects. That makes sense. It creates more material for people to learn from. Exactly. It gives those dialects a fighting chance. It's like building a bridge back to those languages. I love that analogy. Giving future generations a chance to experience them. That's the goal. But it's not just about creating learning materials. It's about inspiring people to actually use those dialects. You got it. Translation can help raise awareness and get people excited about those endangered languages. Showcasing their beauty and cultural significance. Exactly. And it can instill a sense of pride in the speakers themselves, encouraging them to keep their languages alive. To pass them on to their kids. It's about revitalizing not just the language, but the whole cultural identity. And it's a team effort. Absolutely. Yeah. Linguists, translators, educators, community members, everyone needs to work together. We all have a responsibility to protect these linguistic treasures. We do. Now, let's zoom in on a specific area where this work is really important. Bridging the gap between academic scholarship and the public's understanding of Berber culture. Oh, that's interesting. There's often a disconnect there, isn't there? There is. Academics do all this amazing research, but it's often written in a way that's hard for everyday people to understand. It's like having this treasure trove of knowledge, but no way to access it. Exactly. And that's where translation comes in. By translating academic research into more accessible language, we can share all that knowledge with a much wider audience. People who might not have the background to understand those complex academic texts. Right. It's about making that knowledge available to everyone. It's about democratizing knowledge. <laughs> I love that. But it's not just about simplifying the language. It's about making sure the information makes sense within the context of Berber culture. Yes. You're translating ideas, not just words. That's fascinating. It requires a deep understanding of how people think and see the world. It does. And often, translators will work directly with the scholars to make sure the translation is accurate and engaging. It sounds like a really rewarding collaboration. It is. Bringing together those different areas of expertise. So what kind of research do you think would benefit from this kind of translation? Oh, so much. Research on the Berber language itself, the ancient rock art of the Sahara, the role of women in Berber society, the influence of Berber culture on other civilizations. It's all fascinating stuff. Imagine all that knowledge being accessible to anyone who's interested. It would be incredible. It could really spark a renewed interest in Berber culture and history. And it could lead to all sorts of new discoveries and insights. Exactly. It's about creating a dialogue between the academic world and the wider community. Breaking down those barriers. Right. But of course, translating academic research comes with its own challenges. I bet. It's such specialized stuff. It is. You need translators who really understand the material and the target audience. They have to be able to explain complex ideas in a clear and concise way. And in a way that resonates with the audience's cultural background. That's a tough job. It is. But it's so important. It's about promoting cross-cultural understanding. Sharing knowledge. Exactly. And it's more important now than ever before. In our interconnected world, we need those bridges of understanding. We do. Speaking of connections, let's talk about the role of translation in building relationships between Berber speakers and other cultural groups. Oh, yeah, that's crucial. Translation can be a powerful tool for bringing people together. It's like a bridge that connects different cultures. It allows people to share stories and ideas, even if they speak different languages. Exactly. And for Berber culture, translation can help break down stereotypes. Show the world how rich and diverse Berber traditions really are. It can create space for dialogue and challenge preconceived notions. Help people appreciate the contributions of Berber people to the world. Exactly. It's about recognizing the value that every culture brings to the table. It's more important now than ever with all the challenges facing our world. We need those bridges of communication and empathy more than ever. And translation is one of the best ways to build them. It can help us see the world through different eyes, appreciate different ways of thinking, and find common ground. So it's not just about words. It's about building relationships. It is. It's about creating a more inclusive and interconnected world. And for Berber culture, it's about making sure those voices are heard and those traditions are celebrated. That's a beautiful way to put it. Now, before we wrap up, I have to ask you about some must-read works of Berber literature. Oh, I'd love to share some of my favorites. Are you ready? I'm all ears. Okay, so first up, we have The Wululi by the scholar of Zuwara. Okay. It's a collection of poetic legal verses that gives you a glimpse into Berber law and tradition. Interesting. What else? Then there's The History of Nafusa which sheds light on the history and culture of the Nafusa Mountains region. Okay, I've heard of that one. 
What else is on your list? Next up, we have Iasra D. Ibritan G. Lidraren and Infusen by Sheikhs Ibrahim Usleman Al Shamaxi. That's a mouth. I know, right? Yeah. But it's a fascinating geographical work that explores the Infusen region of Libya. Cool. And what's your last recommendation? Last but not least, the book of Abu Anim Bishur Ibn Abi Anam. Okay. It's a foundational text in Ibadi jurisprudence and has had a big influence on religious beliefs within Berber communities. Wow, those all sound amazing. I'm definitely adding those to my reading list and I hope our listeners will check them out too. Me too. There's so much to discover in the world of Berber literature. Well said. As we wrap up our deep dive into Berber literature, I'm really struck by like how rich and resilient it is. It's incredible, isn't it? We've covered so much from the ancient texts to those unexpected translations, the challenges of preserving dialects, even the role of technology. Yeah. And what really stands out to me is how Berber literature has not just survived, but actually thrived, despite all the challenges it's faced over the centuries. It's true. Lost manuscripts, suppression mm -hmm. of the language, pressure to assimilate. It's a lot to overcome. It really speaks to how deeply connected Berber people are to their language and heritage. It shows their determination to keep those traditions alive. And in a world that's becoming more and more globalized, that commitment to preserving those unique voices is more important than ever. It reminds us that diversity is a strength, not a weakness. Exactly. And with all the interest in Berber language and culture these days, the hard work of scholars and translators, and the power of technology to connect people across borders, I think the future of Berber literature is looking really bright. I agree. It's exciting to think about all the possibilities. Yeah. And it's important to remember that the future isn't just about holding on to the past. Right. It's about creating new stories, new poems, new ways of expressing what it means to be Berber today. It's about supporting a new generation of Berber writers and artists, helping them share their perspectives with the world. Exactly. Creating spaces where those voices can be heard, those stories can be shared, and those traditions can be celebrated. That's how we ensure that Berber literature continues to thrive. Well said. I'm walking away from this deep dive with a sense of hope and excitement for what the future holds for Berber literature. It's a story that's still being written, a journey that's still unfolding. It is. And it's a testament to the power of language to connect us all. Beautifully said. I think it's only fitting to leave our listeners with one last thought-provoking question. Okay, I like it. What do you have in mind? Given the long history of translation in Berber, what modern works would you like to see translated into the language? And what kind of impact do you think those translations would have on Berber culture and identity? Ooh, that's a great one. What stories, what ideas, what voices from our world today would resonate with Berber speakers? It's something to think about. It is. And we encourage all of you listening to share your thoughts. Join the conversation and become a part of this ongoing story. Let's keep exploring, keep learning, and keep celebrating the incredible power of language. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Berber literature. Until next time.